السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we praise him We praise him, we thank him We put our trust in Allah we seek refuge in Allah from the evil that exists within us and from the evil of all our bad actions and whomsoever Allah guides there is none who can misguide and whomsoever is left on his own there is no guidance for him being Muslims we all be a witness that there is absolutely none worthy of worship beside Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his slave and his messenger The best of all the speech is the book of Allah And the best of guidance is the guidance with which Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent And everything which is manufactured or created a new thing in the religion of Islam is bidah And every bidah is misguidance and every misguidance is hellfire. We are in the month of Muharram. It's nearly gonna finish. We have been talking about Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, Radiallahu Anhu wa Arda. And I'm, I'm not going to talk anything different other than what has been spoken about Hijrah. If we uh, look into it, there are two aspects of Hijrah, two important aspects of Hijrah, and there are two groups of people, the heroes of Islam associated with the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first group, Al Muhajirun. And the second group, Wal Ansar. And Allah speaks about very high about this group in His Quran. It's a, it's a homework for me and every one of us. Surah Al Hashr, Surah number 59, Ayah 8 and 9. Ayah number 8, the verse number 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Muhajirun and followed by Al Ansar. Amazing people. Allah said in the Quran, 
in the ayah number eight, lil fuqara il muhajirin, the poor immigrant people. الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم who were expelled from their homes وأموالهم from their property فضلا من الله يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا for seeking the bounties of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and Allah Allah said very high about spoke very high about this, this, this group of individuals. وَيَنْصُرُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And they help the Prophet and they help Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet. And Allah finishes the ayah. Allah said about them, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقِينَ صَادِقُونَ they are the truthful. They were the truthful and they are the truthful. A very famous companion, Suhaib al-Rumi, subhanallah, ended up as a, as a slave in Rome, back to Mecca, ended up in slavery again, and his master, who was one of the elite in Kaaba in Mecca, Mushrik, Abdullah ibn Jidan, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked his companions to migrate to Medina, Suhaib al-Rumi radiallahu anhu wa arda, he immediately went out for the migration. Now the Meccans are not going to leave him. They're right there at the exit point waiting for Suhaib. And Suhaib is there. And they said to Suhaib, Ya Suhaib, is it fair you came to Mecca a poor man. Now you collected all this wealth and you're turning back and you're turning your back on the on Mecca. And Suhaib is stuck. And then Suhaib said to them, Will it be okay if I leave all my wealth and go back to the Prophet? They said, Yes, you can do that. And Suhaib al Rumi left everything for the sake of this deen and went along ahead with his migration. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was informed with the revelation, he exclaimed and said, what a beautiful trade you have done, Ya Suhaib. <coughs> These are the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, when Allah spoke so much about in the Quran. And then Allah followed the ayah and he said, it's not going to finish with the, with the Muhajirun. Allah speaks about Al-Ansar. See, if the Muhajirs are on the top, now the Ansar gives them a real close in goodness and in righteousness. And who are the Ansar? We know that. And Allah followed that in the ayah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيُحِبُّونَ Man hajara ilayhim. When these people, when they migrate, they love them. Yuhibbuna. We all know about migration. Every political parties in this world, whether Muslims are migrating or anyone, the first issue they raise is the issue of immigrants. That, that's, that's a fact. Any part of the world you go, any elections, the results will determine. The, there will be some parties who will be fighting on the basis of immigrants. But the Ansar very different people. They, they love the Muhajirun, the Ansar. And we know the story of Abdurrahman ibn Auf. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was putting up one Muhajir with another Ansar, he sent Abdurrahman ibn Auf with Saad ibn Rabia to take him home as his brother. And Saad ibn Rabia radiallahu anhu took Abdurrahman and he said to him, this is my, I'm the richest of the Ansar. And this house is yours. And Wallahi Abdurrahman, Wallahi Saad ibn Rabia did something very extraordinary which no Arab even today can do it. He said to Abdurrahman, I've got two wives. And I will divorce one of them 
and you marry her with her permission of course you marry her which no abu sufyan when he was not a muslim when he said to the mushrikuns let's go and fight the battle of uhud against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked them to take their women along with them for so that when if they want to turn their back the kuffar they can't because they have got their women with them so that's how they used to treat women with but as something very amazing we won't even we it's hard to find in today's world but who are the ansar wallahi it's an amazing story about about the day of hunain one of the tough fight in the history of islam the muslims were almost going to be defeated and at the later part of the of the battle the muslims turned the defeat into victory and the and the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam he started distributing the booty of war in hunain the sahaba he started with the people who came to islam from makka the new muslims he gave them the camels and everything the distribution and lot of gifts to the tribes from the arabs and the ansar was a little bit of upset the story has been brought by ibn ishaq and in quoted by safiur rahman mubarakuri in his famous book ar rahiq al maktum the sealed nectar and he said the ansar was upset you know like they had a feeling that everything has been given to the new muslims that lot of talk started begin in between among this among them and then saad bin ubada came to know about this and he informed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when rasulullah heard this he asked saad to bring to bring all those people in the tent and when the ansar the tribe of ansar who were really upset with but what happened they were called in and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam praised allah and thank and started and he said to the through the ansar i heard that you are angry with me you are upset with me and then he said didn't i came to you and you were enemies among each other and allah through me brought friendship and turned into friendship and made you brothers with each other they didn't say anything and then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said were you not astray and allah guided you through me you were poor and allah gave you wealth the ansar said ya rasulullah allah and his messengers messenger know better and they are more gracious then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to the ansar well you can rightly say that you can say that i was i was rejected from my people i was running away as a fugitive and you gave me comfort i was poor you took me in you took care of me when nobody was there to listen to me and you can rightly say that but i'm only giving all the gifts and everything to do to these people because to incline them more towards the new faith which they have accepted are you anxious towards this dunya and then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said something very powerful and he said wallahi if there is a valley and a passage and every one goes through the valley and passage every people and ansar goes through one valley and passage wallahi i will go along with the ansar and he said how do you feel if everybody goes home with all the camels and the eaves and the lambs and you go with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in your dwellings and the ansar starts weeping they are crying the tears are rolling down their beard and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said may allah bless the ansar their children the children of their children and wallahi amazing people that's what allah said about those people ulaika hum sadiqun they are the truthful they were the truthful and by doing anything we can never even reach closer to them so the point is we talk about hijra the main heroes of hijra wallahi may allah be pleased with amir al mu'minin umar ibn al khattab and shura council for actually taking hijra as the starting of the muslim calendar it could be the day of badr it could be fath al makkah but why hijra 
because hijra is not going is never going to be stopped the hijra for the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala and who was migrating from makka to medina the hijra for us it does have a meaning for us hijra means migrating from shirk to tawhid from bid'ah to the sunnah of the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam hijra from our bad manners to good manners hijra of being good from bad this is the real meaning of hijra but to do that hijra we need to be truthful if we not truthful nothing will come our way it's a very famous hadith a bedouin accepted islam during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he migrated with him to Mac, to Mac, uh, to medina and he fought along with the with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one day in one of the battle when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam got the war booty he sent some to this bedouin the bedouin came with all those material things to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said ma hadha ya rasulullah what is this and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this is your show, this is your share of the booty and this bedouin we don't even know his name and he said qala amantu billahi i believe in you wa amantu bik i believe in allah i believe in you and i am with you in every battlefield and wallahi my wish is that an arrow go from here and comes out from this place and i die as a shaheed and go to jannah and see you in firdaus al ala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam what happened the ne- the very next day this bedouin died as a martyr in the battlefield when they were brought and when he was brought to the the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said undur look at him he said what he said he did look at the arrow it pierced right through his jugular vein and it's out from the other side he said he did what he said so he is truthful to allah and his messenger how truthful are we it's time the hijra when the hijra comes it gives a reminder the hijra making a hijra from all our bad manners to our good things hijra from leaving the salah to getting on all the five times salah hijra on all that is good and acceptable to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala اقول قول هذا استغفر الله استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسوله الامين اما بعد وين Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is coming to Makkah we talking about Fath al-Makkah when he is going to conquer Makkah with his sahaba radiyallahu anhum he he sent a message six individuals they the muslims have to be get away from them six individuals four men and two women and out of that four men there was one individual who had the hatred of islam and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said even if you find those people hanging to the curtain of kaaba you get them and one of the individual is a wahiro <coughs> about his father rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he is the pharaoh he is the pharaoh of my umma ikrima ibn abu jahl when ikrima heard the news that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is coming for the sahaba they are going to take over kaaba he fled he fled to jeddah and from there he took a ship to yemen so that he can avoid the prophet and his companions and what happened he went to the ship on the ship and the journey starts there is a thunderstorm and the ship began to capsize the captain of the ship said look the, the, the ship is full of mushriks politics 
the captain of the ship said, look, let's call to that one God with ikhlas. And no one is going to help us except that one Allah. So let's call him with ikhlas and Allah will deliver, out, deliver us out from this situation. And they are Ikrimah ibn Abi Jahl. He just thought, see this is the moment of truth and it comes, it does come. He said to himself, man, I'm wasting my time. I've spent my whole life fighting the Muslims, defending my gods and my idols. They can't help me this time. And he made a dua, Ya Allah, if I'm saved, I will go back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and I will find him afu wa kareem. I will find him forgiving and very noble. It's his, it's his intention. Now he is, he is truthful. And the, subhanallah, the ship is fine. They made their way through Yemen. But in his absence, his wife goes back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and she is a Muslim by the way, Ummu Hakim. She goes to Rasulullah and she said, Ya Rasulullah, because of what you said, Ikrima fled. Give him security. If you give him security, he will come back. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't even think for a, for a second and he said, he's been given security. And this woman, radiallahu anhu, anha, she goes back and get her husband Ikrima, and when Ikrima is giving shahada to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I have done so many bad things against Islam, against the Sahaba, against you and everything. I, I tried my best to stop the nur of Allah from spreading. <coughs> Ask Allah to forgive me. Astaghfirullah li. Ask Allah to forgive me, Ya Rasulullah. See, he is truthful. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Allah, whatever Ikrima has done to me, to my companions, and to the Muslims, and in stopping the religion of Islam, please forgive him. O oh Allah, have mercy on him. And Ikrima, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, didn't give up his religion. See, he's truthful. He had his moment of truth. He's a changed man. He's truthful. Radiallahu anhu. He, he held, he stood by Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the battle of Yarmouk when the Arab tribes, a lot of Arab tribes, they were turning their back on Islam. Ikrima stood there with Abu Bakr Siddiq and he, in his last moments, he was so badly injured in the battle of Yarmouk and he said these words and he said this statement, he said, Will Rasulullah sallallahu They couldn't even recognize him. He was so badly injured that this is Ikrima. And he said, Will Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be pleased when he see me like this? Subhanallah. I wish our youngsters, our youth, our, our children become like Ikrima. Radiallahu anhu. May Allah guide us to that which is right. May Allah guide us to follow these these examples of this Sahaba radiallahu anhu about whom Allah said in the Quran as sabiqoon as sabiqoon ulaikal mukarrabun they are the front runners right there Ikrima, Abu Darda, Abu Dahda Zubair, Abdullah ibn Zubair Omar ibn al-Khattab, Ali ibn Abi Talib there in the front the sabiqoon and the mukarrabun and we also need to do the hijra hijra of leaving all those bad I mean, we have our family program in this masjid every Saturday. And we talk about these people, about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in this and his companions. And we hope and we make dua to Allah that we keep talking about them and try to imitate them till we meet them, al firdaus al-Ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, bless this gathering. Help them, help the Muslims in this new year and take the Muslims out of their out of their bad times, the Muslims in Myanmar, Muslims in Syria, Iraq, any part of the world. May Allah guide us to that which is straight and only guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allahu malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi 
يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والاحياء منهم والاموات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يعمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى واعز واجل واتم واحم واكبر اقيموا الصلاه